Welcome to Swarf and Chips. The show's been going through the roof. Since the first two editions, we've had thousands of views, which is great news, and dozens of requests from you wanting to be on the show. If you do want to be on the show, do contact us using the details below. Today, we're going to mix it up a little bit because I've got Mark and Paul with me who are going to be discussing the week's topics. Joe's over in Eurobleck and Colin is coming up very shortly and he's been at the NEC at the Advanced Engineering Show. We do also have a special guest today who's going to be discussing automation. However, our first shout out of today's show goes to Gareth from Wilbar Components. When can I come on the show and can I bring my dog? Of course you can, Gareth. I say that, but what do you guys think? D depends what sort of dog it is, Lindsay. Better ask Aww, him. Four legs better than two. I'm not having a Doberman Pinscher be... in here. That'll be bigger than you. Uh, I think I think all animals are welcome. All customers. I think yeah, well, if we you want to bring a dog, <laughs> are we making this a rule? <laughs> we have Joe on set, so we're allowed animals. <laughs> he's not here. Talk about him when he's not here. Right, okay. First company is Dean Bank. Tell me a little bit more about this. Yeah, um, Sodic Machines, um, EDM, really big player. They've got customers that uh, really need surface fin finishing and this SL400Q that uh, these guys are using is a fabulous machine. They're getting great results from it. Right, okay, moving on, Herco. You went to Herco. Now this is the Herco's smallest machine tool that they've ever made, tell me more. Yeah, this is the VM5, very compact machining centre. It was, it was kind of launched at the recent show that we went to, but they, they used to sell, Dave Waghorn here tell, told me all about the reasons for bringing this model to market. There used to be a VM10, was a VM1 then a VM10. Those machines were ideal for subcontract engineers, but as people are looking for smaller working environments, they always want even smaller machines with bi as bigger capacity. And that's kind of where this machine fits. It's already very, very competitively priced as well. So it's, it's a compact machine at a great price. Right, okay, I was going to ask you about the price. Approximately, can you put price points? Dave said on this video, it's actually 29,950, I think he said, for the VM5i. It's really so, good, isn't it? Not bad. Not bad. You could afford two. Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Guayfer, you went to see them about their tool and their chucks. Yeah, um, Gwe, they've, they've launched this new product um, and Joe, uh, obviously with his tooling background, um, spoke to the MD of the company and they developed this product uh, for a customer that is having a lot of problems and they wanted to get to, to at least a micron on, on the project. And that's where you talk about zero run out, is that right? Yeah, I, I watched this uh, with, great, with great interest really because uh, everybody wants to improve tool life on their tooling. Everybody wants to get minimal run out on tools. And this as a project um, for these guys at Gawafa was about achieving exactly that. And they have, they can get less than a micron or about a micron run out on this tool. So you get better tool life. It means you, you can be, go across more diverse applications. So overall it's a good product. And also they're saying that uh, regrinding as well for, for toolings. So real, really good project. Correct. Right. And massive, massive machine uh, was at Ward High Tech and the Hawachon. This was a big machine that you went to visit, Paul. Tell us. It is an absolute beast, isn't it? It's huge. I mean, the chuck in size, you've got sort of like 24, 28 inch chuck it can go up to. Here we've got a classic shaft being machined with a steady on it. The biggest thing about this machine is it's got a big Y axis. It's also got a, a turret on it, which has got almost like two sides to the turret, so you can hold a boring bar across. Uh, a more or a bigger surface area to give you more rigidity when you're boring. Most impressively, they carry these machines in stock. And you don't, you don't find many companies that do. So yeah, are you gonna have a need for one of these on an everyday basis? Probably not, but when you do need one, can you find one quickly? Well, you can with Ward High Tech. And what sort of markets are the, is this aimed at then? Uh, oil and gas, nuclear, petrochemical. Uh, it, it can go across the board, anything where you've got Big, big component tree. We've had a few messages that have come in from the show, so don't forget you can contact us on the details below. And uh, it's Neil from Rolls Royce has emailed in. I know you met him at the Seiko Innovation through uh, Inspiration through Innovation event. Loves the show. He says keep up the good work. That's very nice. Good news. Another one. And also Keith from Whiteland Precision called in to say his team used to have. This is great actually. They used to have a smoko break, and now they have an MTD break. 
So much healthier. I know, I love this. Thank you very much. Does that mean they cut out the fags in? Yeah, basically. Right. Yeah, right. we're becoming In favour of our video. Yes. Wow. Uh, then you've got the Lehman five axis table we're talking about. This is a five axis table that is built to a price without a compromise on quality. Engineers that have three axis machining centres might look to expand upon their three axis capability and go for a five axis solution. Often it can be very expensive to do that. Uh, when you talk about the interfacing and the integration. Lehman have, have, have developed this tap table, which essentially is a very competitively priced two axis table that can go on mini mills, robo drills, uh, compact machine tools. And it's a, yeah, they're aiming at an audience where they maybe think two axis tables are too expensive. Can I afford one? Well, yes, you can. Yeah, put that on top. And then what does it turn it to? A full five axis? Yeah, you've got full five axis capability. Here they've got the inclusion of a, a, a robot with some Lang work holding, just showing you to the extent of what you can achieve with this. But when it's about accuracy and speed, the indexing time of this, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it is blooming quick. Very, very quick. Very fast tables. So as opposed to someone going out and uh, investing in a massive, you know, five axis, full simultaneous machine. You can have a three axis machine with and this. And then you put this on top. Correct. Fantastic. So at Stuttgart, you went and visited the Heller stand and yep. it's the HF3500. Main difference is the fact that it's got a trunnion. What, how does this help the machine? Well, it's really the, the style of the machine has changed. A HF is horizontal five axis, and that's what they're pushing, really. So, so it's more aimed at uh, more production type work and not necessarily just in their stronger areas like aerospace and automotive. That horizontal, he, he mentioned this, didn't he? He said they used to have the horizontal and then the F stands for five axis, and this is an amalgamation of both of them. The answer to your question, Lindsay, about the table is the fact that this is now a fully supported trunnion. So whereas you sometimes have a trunnion, you don't have a support supporting the other end, this machine's now got a support and a drive axis. So essentially you've got a lot more capability control. for control and rigidity in your machining process. Okay. Talking about control is, is they've been working with Siemens as well because their, their controls are very much Heller machines, Heller control panel, but they're working with Siemens to actually adapt a, a, a touch screen um, product and it really works well for them. And I think what's important to mention about this is a lot of subcontractors might think Heller out of my reach, it's not, explore it because there is, yeah. you know, they're very competitively priced machines when you look at what you get for your uptime and what they can produce for value for money I suppose is a big word. Yeah. That's a good idea if someone's thinking oh no it's a bit out of my reach, no nope, well worth it. Paul you visited Tornos, tell me a little bit more because there's a guide bush, non-guide bush, you can change it. One of the uh, points we made on this video, which was quite good about the speed you can go from guide bush machining to non-guide bush machining. We actually got the guy to do it and we filmed it, speeded it up and it took him like 11 minutes. Yes. And Tornos said to us, you have to really focus this point to your audience because it's important because a manufacturer may want a machine with a guide bush uh, and you know to do his traditional kind of sliding head work and then he might want a non-guide bush machine to go towards maybe more fixed head type scenario work. With this machine you can go from one to the other in 11 minutes. And the footprint of that machine looks fairly small. Very very small and also when you go from guide bush to non-guide bush in a lot of machines that can do it as well you have to move the bar feed. On this you don't, you can do it. The guy literally stood there, opened the back hatch of the machine, went in, did the job. Well, you minutes. see it in the video, it's definitely worth watching that video because you're just thinking, wow, that was quick. They've really addressed a, a need in the market for a machine of this size for the price that it's at, so it'll be popular. Yeah. So you both went to visit Akuma and you spoke to Richard. What makes this machine so fast and rigid for its size? Well, there's a big range of machines at Akuma, which they sell through NCMT in the UK. And, and this machine is rigid, it's, it's multiple axes effectively, and also dynamic tool load, which really sort of measures up to be a machine that is more affordable than you actually think. Uh, I'd have my hair cut there, hadn't I? Just like I had oh, now. Yeah. Must have been yeah. a haircut cycle ago. Just noticed that point, more interesting, <laughs> what my hair's like than the machine. You're meant to be engaging the, in I was the looking video. at the, uh, the that, that table there is actually, what we looked at is a, is a double supported table like we were talking about earlier. Mm. You could see that the trunnion had a support one side and driven the other, yeah. which is where you get that rigidity from. This machine, it's great. The way that table actually buries itself under the bridge of the machine, because it's a bridge construction yeah, as well. Yeah, I was going to ask about the bridge. All of that construction together with the weight and the way uh, the way the axis move means it's kind of like quite a neat and tidy footprint with a very, uh, well, with a very, very well-built sort of dynamic structure to it. Really and, nice And Akuma the, 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 is a really, really high-end 
brand, but like a lot of uh, companies, they look at it, so it's out of my reach. I tell you what, engineers, just, just look at it because it's more affordable than you think. Yeah, and that, that turns as well. It, it's, it's turning function. It's turning yeah. as well, wow. Yeah. It's a big machine for the, well, we, and we you spoke say how last fast week. it goes. Yeah, I, I can't remember. Can you remember? I can't remember how oh, fast it goes. No. But we spoke last week about the machines that are capable of both milling and turning and how few and far between the applications are, which would still stand by, but to have a machine that can do both is, is, is really good. He loved it as well, Richard. That was his favourite machine, wasn't it, when we spoke to him? Yes, but also <laughs> favourite from engineers watching the video as well, because it's had more hits than any of the other videos that we've done. Oh, really? Well, they've got such a good name in the industry as well, Hakuma have, haven't they? Correct. Yeah, well, last but not least, do not forget, if you want to be on the show or you want to contact us, please do look at the details below and you could even be on the show in the next few weeks. Last but not least is Mapel. They've just launched their new Seacom software, uh, but also they've got uh, a new drill that they've been pushing effectively, which is the Trident drill. And it's such a great product because you've got um, interchangeable heads of the actual tool. But it's three flute as well, isn't it? So it three, is. A three flute drill, which these guy, I mean, he, 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 for this product, he's like, this is going to be, this is amazing. This is going to, this is going to turn the engineering world on its head. Is he it? was very excited know. about it. I did, say, I did say to him, is it unique? And he said it was. And I, whether, whether that's, you know, strictly true, I'm not sure, but, you know, it's a great product. Mm. He actually it, drill, yeah. he actually uses it on his thumbnail, he doesn't he? That's so, what I mean. He was really yeah. excited about it because he was trying to show you yeah. um, all the workings of it and saying about all the new technology, so. But I suppose, again, you're looking at um, improved performance, improved tool life, uh, chip flow, all of those mm. factors are going to be much better with this um, with this tool. Fantastic. You've had a busy week. Uh, well, I have. Oh. Others may well, not You have. haven't had time to shave, obviously. Well, <laughs> well, well, on talking of shaving, I have got a message from Joff who's got a question. Oh, no, no. Paulie guy... wants to know who does your hair. <laughs> <laughs> this guy keeps cropping up, doesn't he? Who is he? I haven't got does a Does he want a job? I haven't got a clue. Well, you haven't answered us. Uh, who does it? I do it myself. Yeah, do yeah, 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 yeah. And how do you I wouldn't do let anyone head? else near this head. Oh. <laughs> There's not much of it, is there? Oh, goodness me. Right, okay. Uh, up next, I've got to, uh, I'm have got. i going to be talking to Colin, who is at the Advanced Engineering Show, all the way over at the NEC. We're at Advanced Engineering, and we popped in to see one of the MTD network customers, CC Patterns, and their sister company, Code and Composites. I've had a chat with Mark and Kevin from the company. They said what's best to do is actually have a chat with one of the other guys, R2. So R2, thank you for joining us and having a chat with us. First of all, what I'd like to do really is cover what industries do you work with? Oh, that's really interesting. So in those industries, what actual materials are you using? Okay, that's a new one on me actually, the Rohacel, what's that for? Oh, essentially, so keeping the F1 cars sturdy but light. Excellent. All right, so obviously these components are high-tech, high-precision. So what machines are you using? Oh, the Haas machine. So why specifically the Haas? Okay, and other machines that you've got? Oh, what, so why the Bellotti then? Okay, so great sort of little insight into the company. So really, what sort of components are you manufacturing? Well, clearly yourself then. So what are you made of, R2? So I assume that's this bit here. That's right, the blue. And the black. And finally, the silver. Got you. So what other components? Okay, so that's on the Ducati. Um, and the next component? Oh, that's interesting. So you've actually sort of bonded aluminium with the carbon fibre. Excellent. And then a couple of final ones that really quite sort of unusual, really. R2, great insight into the company. May the force be with you. Back to the studio. Thank you, Colin. Now I'm joined by Nick Statham from Fast Thames, and we're going to be discussing a little bit more about automation. However, 
I need to speak to you because George and Jan at Sub C and C, they're joining us next week in the studio and they would like to know whether they need to bring their Red Bull to go with oh, the Jaeger. Oh, oh. They, they need to bring the Jaeger, not the Red Bull. I oh, think we yeah. should swap it around. Yeah. Are we going to have a party? They, they are classic party animals, those guys. <laughs> they are always out and about. Yeah, we can accommodate you. Yeah, we, we'll have it all here, I'm sure. I look yeah. forward to it. <laughs> Will you be right. joining us? If I may. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, who wouldn't? So Nick, tell us more about your company and what you do. So Fastems are the world leader in automation of flexible manufacturing and um, I am the sales manager for the UK. Right, and tell us a little bit more. I know you've been discussing this morning about your company and uh, Fastems, but you wanted to make a point about automation and it not being so repetitive, which is what many people think about. Yeah, most people, as, as you correctly say, associate automation with a single component being made in many, many, many quantities. Um, and of course, the classic that you'd see would be um, a car shell coming down an assembly line at a, at a car, on a car plant and lots of robots diving in. And most people, as I said, associate automation with high volume manufacturing. Um, the niche market that Fast Terms is, is approaching um, is for um, flexible manufacturing. And most people don't appreciate that you can actually automate flexible manufacturing. And that's the message we're trying to give. That's a good couple of words that flexible manufacturing because automation and flexible manufacturing are the same thing but the flexible side is the key isn't it yes because you do f tend to find when we certainly when we did this video here uh, for you guys at RE Thompson this is a classic example of a business that has grown astronomically as a result of their fle flexible manufacturing isn't it it's not about having one part and making thousands of the same components it's about having a variety of parts but really wanting to make sure you can automate that so you don't have to get involved in the in the changeovers. You don't have to keep changing work holding because all that stuff is downtime, isn't it? Which Absolutely. is what you preach, yeah. really, isn't it? Well, two things. I mean, the first thing is that um, all the high volume manufacturing has been offshore to principally China and India and companies like that. And UK manufacturing now very much focuses on flexible manufacturing with small quantities, quick deliveries, all, all that kind of stuff. The trouble, as Paul just said, is that when you are breaking down your machines to make new parts all the time, there's a lot of dead time where the machine is just standing still and the machine, the spindle is not cutting metal. Um, if you use an automation system such as ours, you maximise that uptime. And to give you some idea, um, a typical vertical machining, sorry, horizontal machining centre, um, even fully manned, etc., 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 you're lucky if you're cutting metal 35, 40% of the time. Whereas when you automate it with a system such as ours, you can get much closer to 95%. Um, and that's a significant improvement. So if you had one machine, and you bought an automation cell to go with it and turned it into a cell, is that better than buying two machine tools? Absolutely, just do the maths. If you get a 40% efficiency versus a 95% efficiency, you're more than double in terms of your productivity for twice the price. And if you, if you were to do a comparison of, do you buy three machines or do you buy two machines and automate, suddenly the, the return on investment just, just and I think the big yeah. thing is it applies to everybody. It's not just a narrow audience, it's a massive audience, isn't it? Nick? Well, how many yeah. subcontractors have got a couple of uh, horizontal machining centres? Mm. You know? Mm. Now, as long as you've got the order book, as long as you can sell the capacity, it, it's a steal. It's an absolute steal. I need steal. to be talking to this guy yeah. for more water. Or Thank if you. They want to be more flexible. <laughs> if you need to be more flexible. Thanks, Nick. Thank you for joining us. Up next, I'm going to be with Joe, who's returned from Eurobleck. Joe, you went to Eurobleck, you went to the Mazak stand. What did you get up to? Yeah, went over to Hanover, got invited by Mazak. Great stand, full of the latest technology. But the one thing of note was this DDL laser, the Optiplex. What's the DDL? Uh, direct diode laser. It's new technology, not only to Mazak, but the marketplaces in, in, as a whole. Um, it reduces cycle times, it's more efficient than fibre, uh, more efficient than CO2 as well, obviously. So wh what's the technology behind it? What? Well, it's direct... DDL direct diode laser. Um, there's no fibre cable in between. Um, and basically the waveform is reduced. It's actually less than one micron. And that's where you get your increased productivity from. You reduce, you, know, you reduce energy consumption and improve surface finish. OK. Anything else? More technology on the stand? Yeah, that was the high end. But they also had a new product offering at the lower end. So somebody just getting into uh, fabrication maybe or somebody's not looking for you know, production chasing the seconds. They had a solution for that. And also a brand new uh, Mazak 
automation system which actually is developed and built by themselves. Oh, okay, so they've got their own automation. Mm -hmm. So if I had a machine shop, for example, and I had Mazak machines, would I now be starting to talk to Mazak as opposed to a third party? Would they be better for my machines if it's Mazak? I would, yeah. You know, the, the interface, it's plug and play. The controls are very similar. Um, they're rolling out this new control across all their machines now, this uh, Preview G, which is a bit like the smooth on the, you know, on the milling and turning side. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and they've got a similar control on the automation side, would they also offer third party if you want something a bit more bespoke? Yes. But again, it's the 80 20 rule. So for the 80% of people, the Mazak system is going to be great and be ideal. But if you want something a bit different, maybe you do need to still speak to Mazak about what else is in the marketplace. Quite exciting for Mazak. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're doing well. They're doing very well. Cool. Okay. Well, I'll see you next week. Thanks, Lindsay. We're famed for our deals, and this week's deal of the week is the Hawachon 450. Paul? Correct. This is from Ward High Tech. The 450 is kind of like a 12 stroke 15 inch chuck machine. Uh, it's a very beefy machine. In fact, Hawachon machines, uh, they, they tell us that they're heavier than the majority of their competition. This has got a Y axis in a very neat and tidy footprint. They carry the machines in stock, and yes, it's our, or their. You say deal stock, of the week. stocks? X stock or stock, they have got several of these machines. They bought them in because customers need flexibility in the modern marketplace, and that's why it's a deal of the week because it's a very flexible machine. And yeah, it's our deal of the week. Right, I've got quite a few more to go through, but we did have uh, Bob Tunks from BK Tooling, and he called in after watching the show. And Bob has called in to say he's got some used machines for sale at his site as well. So that's good to know. Again, do let us know if you've got any machines that you know you're selling or anything. Please do contact us on the details below. Right, Nakamura. Yeah, the AS two hundred. They carry these machines in stock as well. Similar reason to the Ward High Tech scenario. Engineers nowadays want flexibility when they buy a machine. They want to kind of get the best of all worlds. So machine tool suppliers have to cater for that when they're bringing in stock machines. So they try and bring in machines that can cater for the needs of as much machining complexity as possible. And the Nakamura is the same. So they've got machines in stock. So again, deals on those. Through ETG? Through ETG. Right, Dugard 760XP. Yeah, the 760XP is a small machining centre. In fact, Dugard's have also got another deal on our site. I don't know whether you've seen this one, Mark, but where they're offering two machines for the equivalent of £15 per hour. Oh. So a machining centre and a lathe hit the deck. You don't want any financial mm. commitments. You don't want to outlay a lot of money. You're basically happy to rent a machine and see how the next month, two months, six months, year goes. And then if you don't want the machines at the end of a term, you can give them back. How flexible is that? Great marketing strategy. Yeah, very good. Right, and that's with Dugard. Mark, you've got quite a few and then I've got a few more. Uh, Soddy Tech, um, they've got some EDM machines in which are the VL400Qs and 600. DMG, Mori, they've got the Eco Mill 600 and 800s. TW Ward got a vast range of uh, stock at the moment. Hyundai Weir, Takis Hours, Hancock and Hartford's. And those DMG Morries, we, we reviewed those, or I reviewed those, a 600 and 800. Very different to your regular type machining centres, built differently, so it's worth watching the videos, but they are in stock. And you mentioned it was a good visit to TW Ward. They've got some really yeah. big, beefy machines there, you know, some oil country equipment. And the Taki Sour one was a twin spindle facing mm. a twin turret machine. So, yeah. So oil country? Is that Aberdeen, Scotland? Could be anywhere. Could be anywhere. Yeah. And Paul, some more deals? Yes, yeah, some more deals. Tooling-wise, ITC with their Widia products. Joe had the guys here uh, earlier last week. They were discussing some of the promotions they've got coming up to the, towards the year end, as well as Goering with their taps and drills. They've got some promotions before the end of 2016. Romy are having a, a clear out of their showroom and bringing in new machine tools for 2017. So there'll be teach lathes and also some machining centres, their popular D range available there. Abilink's the other one, isn't it? Abilink's the other one, and also Lubriserve with their Swarf Spinner. If you're looking to get the, the best from your, your, well, from your Swarf really, you should look at the Lubriserve's uh, Swarf Spinner and the Metrology, as Mark mentioned, with Abilink, their CMM, which is manufactured here in the UK, which you know all about. Yes, from last week's show. Correct. Thank you very much. We've come to the end of the show, so that's it for today. Don't forget to tune in every Friday for your latest edition of Swarf and Chips. Next week, we'll be joined by a leading industry figure and the guys will be discussing how you can make the most of your spare machining capacity and, of course, what they've been up to between now and then. And don't forget to keep your spindles turning.